Hi everybody, I'm Chris and welcome to Van Life Under the Milky Way. Join me as we explore this great country, Australia. Trying to install a dual battery system today, all the final points of it. Got my van apart, paid $500 yesterday for auto electricians to punch it through the firewall and hook it up to the fuse box. It was a lot more complicated than they expected, so I'm glad I didn't do it. But now I'm trying to get it from the last bit, all the way under here. I'm trying to get it through here and then run it up here so it comes right out underneath. And joints on the pit here for the alternator input. Got a kick-ass lithium power station which has solar input and also runs from the alternator. One of the main reasons to get the kick-ass lithium power station was that you can pull it out by simply listening this off. Simply unclip that. I've got my light system here so I'm about to lose lights when I pull this out. There goes my lights. This is my solar input here. Pull that out in the answer plug. My alternator input is out. So that's all the cabling at the moment. It's obviously the alternator, the free pin Anderson plug, which has it, it which has an ignition wire being the blue one. That way it knows that. When you turn the ignition off, it disconnects it from the battery, so it don't drain your main battery. That's the solar input. That's what I'm using for the lights. So all the circuitry is inside the box. It's got circuit breakers inside the box that automatically reset themselves. It's got an MPPT integrated charger. It's got a battery management system. These are all your sockets you've got with four USBs and two cigarette sockets. Got a on off switch here for your, if you want it thing. You've got your, your display here 98%. It's showing the current, nothing going in. 13.27 volts. Temperature is 14 degrees. And then you've also got the other display with the X cell. And it's done six cycles and it's got 120 amp hours. This is where you hook up an inverter if you want. Or if you've got a flat battery, you can also charge a flat battery with that in your car. You've got four more Anderson plugs inlets there. And then you've got two more at the back here. The good thing about it is you can remove it from the van. So if this van dies, which you never know, then all I have to do is take the battery box out and everything's taken out with it sort of thing. The circuitry, the whole lot. Two to 4,000 cycles, and I've done six cycles in about a month, so it's pretty good. That's the Kick-Ass Lithium Power Station. Pilot drill, just to drill the first hole down there and there. Then I use the step drill to drill it up to a 14 mil, and it's a an 8 by 13 by 19 grommet, and that'll sit in there. And then I'll run the cabling, the cabling through there, and that solar panel will be hooked up. With. They have drilled the two holes. For the solar connections for the MC4, which is then going to go to an Anderson plug, which will go back to the solar. I've got a rust proof it, the cut that I've cut, so it doesn't rust. I've got to let the paint dry for an hour. Bring the solar cables through. Up to the next step. Put the grommets in. 
and the glands are here they'll cable glands will tighten up so that'll be sealed just using liquid nails construction adhesive okay i've got to seal it now it's just a matter of attaching that and putting some weight if you've got a whole lot of tools i'll put on the top let it dry for a while and it should be good now i have to connect the positive and the negative to an anderson plug so i can plug it in to where it goes in the battery box there you can see it down there so once this is dried i'll tighten these cable glands which will seal these up there waterproof and i'll hook up the other mc4 connectors and the solar should be going Since I've got the battery, I had to modify my cupboard system because it wasn't going to fit the way it was. So when you live in the van and you have to modify, it's kind of difficult because it means you can only do little bits at a time. This is where my food supply is in a cupboard here that this just all falls out with food. More food in the back there. Just easy slides in. I've got a few more bits underneath in the smaller bits. More food in the top part. Got my gas cooker here. Pulls out nice and easy. I have a table that folds out if I want to. And you put this out. Just right here. It hooks up under here. Sits there. Got my chopping board here. So for cooking. And I'm getting this is another storage cupboard. Got my computer in here, which I do processing on and stuff like that, watch telly, etc. All my cameras, etc. in there. Uh, Esky Arctic Pro, it's 25 litre for my water. And you can fill it up easy at service stations and stuff like that. I've got 25 litres there. And you just turn it to the side to get water, which works quite efficiently. I've got my van sound deadened, most of it, with car sound deadening. And then I've sort of put this carpet underlay, but this is as far as I've got. When I've got the money, I'll complete this section. Maybe one day put carpet. Not sure about that yet. Got a lighting system now, a 12 volt lighting system. So at night, I've got lights, finally, which makes it a lot of improvement. It's got two types of lights. It's got the bright white and an orange type of white. Got the sound deadening on this, these all pop off if I want to. It's got earth, rare earth magnets that pull up like this. If you really, I don't normally do this much, but sometimes you want the light a bit more. And you just pull these back, rare earth maggots, magnets, like so. And this just folds out. And that also does on the other side there. If I want a bit more light, and I can do it on the back too, but I leave the back pretty much shut up, it's just easier. When you're camping at night, not having car lights and stuff like that come in. It's a small van, but it's the long wheelbase version of the Kangoo Renault, which is just enough. And I put this up a little bit when I put the seat back. So it's just long enough. The Normal wheelbase wouldn't be long enough. I need the long wheelbase to have enough room. 110 watt solar panel on top. Running it with the alternator, it normally does it within about or half an hour if that. The lowest it's got is probably about 75% and that's after two days, but I haven't been running a fridge yet. So van life, you're always moving. I'm here for two months pruning cherry trees at the moment, just down the road, about 10 minutes down the road. And this camping spot's really beautiful. If it rains, this soil just turns into mud and you, well, you'll get bogged in a van like this, so I have to stay real close to the highway. When it's sunny and it hasn't been raining, absolutely perfect spot. You can hear the whistling kite in the background and a dog barking. Okay, this is looking from the back point of view of the van. A few more tools here. 
more camera equipment and stuff like that. Some gum boots and clothes that here, clothes that slide out, clothes and chips and some toilet paper. Looking in the van. More storage compartment up there, mostly backpacks and stuff like that, and eventually it'll have my panniers for the cycling. What a beautiful sunset that was. Life living on the edge of the Murray River. The sun has just gone down. Birds are all making their calls and sounds. Time to cook some dinner and then slowly get ready for cherry pruning in the morning. So tonight, I'm going to have to sleep in the van next to the road. This will be my sleeping place tonight. A little bit closer than the road than I like. But I'll explain the reason in a second. So that's the main road just there. And then five minutes to work down that road there. Been camping at Buxton's Bend, Parks Victoria. When these roads get a bit of rain on, or a bit of moisture, they become very sticky indeed. At the moment we had rain this morning, so it's too sticky to drive the van into where I'd normally camp. So as you can see by my shoes, the mud just sticks to it. As soon as it's got some moisture, these roads are just sticky as, and it's too slippery for the van. You'd need a full drive, and even then you'd be spinning everywhere. So I just drilled out my roof with a hole saw. It's also got a pilot drill in the middle, what you drill through first. It took a little while because it's only a simple 12 volt drill, but it got through. Got to wait about an hour for that to dry. Glue it with seals out water, works on wet and oily and dirty surfaces. Sally's all clear. Seal it with that. And then I've got a few connections, an Anderson plug that hooks into a 12 volt, which hooks into a cigarette lighter, which I'll plug into my battery, and I should have a, a fan going at last. So I used a Sutton Tools bimetal cobalt hole saw, 120 mil, or four and three quarter inches. Stainless steel, mild steel, and aluminium. The winter sun doesn't rise much on the horizon, so you don't get a lot of daylight hours for your solar panel. So being on a roof box, I have the option to flip it up like this, and angle 
it towards the sun. It's 110 watt flexible. You can flex it up to 30 degrees. I think it weighs 1.7 kilos. So it's quite lightweight for the roof box. Four holes originally, and then I drilled a few extra holes to make sure it's firm. It sits there pretty well. I'm going to open up this for a bit of sunshine. So I video edit, try and edit this van life video, which has been a long time in the making. Uh, that opens up the sunlight. It's a room of a view. Had a beautiful sunset last night. This has got the sound deadening on the outside, these window shields. And it's just got a bit of thin plywood in the middle. And then stuck the waterproof carpet underlay on the back which works, it's got a bit of weight and it does, it keeps the sound out pretty well. And I've had it like that now for one and a half years, so it's lasted. And I've got the one on the other window and the two other windows at the back. Got this system that folds down, it's there. Turn the fan on. And this is where I cook my meals. Food box back in here. Slides in and out pretty easy. And it's got a bit of carpet. I've put carpet on it so it doesn't slide out. Otherwise, if they're loose, they slide out when you go around corners. But having the carpet on, everything stays intact pretty well. Unless it's super bumpy, but almost all the time it's been pretty good. An Australian kookaburra. Superb fairy wren. Willy wagtail attacking a crystal. Lake Hume as the fog rises, Albury Wodonga. White plumed honey eater. Red rumped parrots having a drink. Mallee ring-necked parrot.
lot of Corellas. An eastern grey kangaroo. A male emu telling the young ones it's time to leave. Today's news has become today's blues, and I'm overcome. I didn't choose to feel this way. Blue bonnet parrots. I got caught in the lights of some other man's spy, and now it seems as if my before sunrise. Murray Sunset National Park, Lake Crosby. Sulfur crested cockatoo. Whistling kite. Pink lakes caused by an algae.
black kites trying to grab a duck from the lake. Wedgetail eagle. A black kite. Galah. Major Mitchell cockatoos. Black shouldered kite. Red capped robin, Warny frog mouth above my car. It's a tawny frog mouth. So that's what I'm seeing here. White necked heron. Shed my skin. It's time now to begin again, begin again. Solar spin. Just a sentimental paraffin. Mulga parrots having a bath.
Bristol doing battle.